Welcome back guys. Uh, now in this video let's talk about uh, the principle of gram staining. Uh, majorly I uh, will be focusing on the gram staining in the practical approach rather than the principal uh, actual theoretical approach. But uh, the foundation of gram staining is based on basically the structural variance of the type of bacteria we are dealing with. Because uh, gram staining is something that you can't ignore if you are a microbiologist because in any sense if you need to get a bacteria the first thing for the classification of the bacteria and putting it into a particular group the first thing you should do is just put it on gram stain because once you understand whether it is a gram positive or gram negative depending upon the ability of that bacteria to retain a particular color inside the cell uh, we can tell that and depending upon that we can classify them in, in, in different sections and we can know different properties of that bacteria right so gram staining is very very vital guys right so you can't can't escape from gram staining in any condition now normally what we know about uh, gram staining is that uh, it actually based on the structural morphology of the bacteria and especially the morphology of the membrane and or cell wall of the bacteria because we know uh, there are two kinds of bacteria that are present in planet one kind which are having uh, two membranes outside surrounding the cytoplasm another one is having three layers right so that one which is having two layers are having one inner cell membrane and one outside cell wall which is made up with another mo complicated molecule that's called peptidoglycan which is different from the composition of a cell membrane which is mostly made up with phospholipids so here you can see in this left hand side we are having two layers one is the cell membrane the innermost layer and then the outermost in this case the peptidoglycan layer which is very very thick and this is not a membrane we call it a wall because it's very rigid and it provides the cell a very huge structural rigidity on the other hand if you look at the right hand side there are another kind of bacteria present which are having three layers instead of two they are having an inner innermost layer which is obviously cell membrane layer it is called the inner cell membrane then it is also having that peptidoglycan layer which is denoted with this green color but this is very 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 thin uh, for this kind of bacteria and then the third and extra outer layer is present that is called the outer membrane or the third or extra uh, cytoplasmic extracellular membrane the outer membrane mostly known as now this outer membrane is a unique property of those kind of bacteria and then the presence of this outer membrane and the reduction of the size and, and thickness of the peptidoglycan distinguishes between these two type of cells and they, as a result of this uh, variations in their peptidoglycan uh, deposition as well as the outer membrane uh, the presence of outer membrane uh, they vary in the uptaking of different stain or which are the colors right so that's why these are the foundation of gram staining so let's begin with the process of gram staining and understand why they are getting different color now the basic thing is that if we put a simple staining procedure so normal staining not simple stain simple stain is a different kind of stain anyways if we put through a kind of staining procedure where you use two different type of dyes one dye is for purple color another one is for the pink color as you can see here pink and purple two different colors are there now pink color containing that dye is called saffronine and the purple color is crystal violet now if you use those two stain to stain them independently and wash them uh, in each stages during a sequential stage of processes ultimately one of them will retain the crystal violet stain which you use at the very beginning another one of them will not retain that it will get the color of the next stain that we add which is the saffronine because remember the whole procedure we are using the stains in a gap or the durations at the very first stage what we do we uh, we just take up the bacteria we make a smear in, into our slides we just place it and heat fix it a little bit after that we add the first stain which is crystal violet and we stay it for one minute so once we've done with this so say let's do this different type of bacteria we are handling here this two type of bacteria we flood it with crystal violet stay and let it uh, stay for one minute after that the second stage what we need to do we need to put some iodine solution in now what this iodine solution are doing here iodine solution is acting uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's very important in this case because this iodine can form complex with crystal violet and that form crystal violet iodine complex and this complex is very important because uh, so, so we add this 
and it remains in the purple color everything is fine after that we wash this we wash this with with alcohol right so we decolorize it why we add alcohol because alcohol here is very important because what we want to prove here we want to put some staining procedure which will be varied for these two different types of cell because remember crystal violet and iodine complex are pretty larger now because iodine normally crystal violet was slightly which can escape the cell but now due to the presence of iodine and crystal violet complex it's become too much larger to be escaped from cell membrane just easily now what we having here once we put alcohol in this place what alcohol does actually alcohol destabilizes the cell membrane the outer membrane here so that's what the very important thing is so it will destabilize the outer membrane now this outer membrane phospholipids are destabilized in alcohol and they are kind of dissolved in the alcohol so those type of bacteria we, which we are seeing in the right hand side now due to the addition of decolorizing agent or alcohol about 20 seconds they lose their outer membrane and not only that but as they are having very thin very tiny and thin peptidoglycan layer the pore size of the peptidoglycan layer is also slightly increased so as a result of that once we add this decolorizing agent what it does actually it just rub up all this outer membrane and also create larger pore in the peptidoglycan layer so as a result of that uh, those crystal violet complex easily can pass out through this peptidoglycan holes, holes right so why it's important because you know uh, the peptidoglycan layer is now having larger pores and through those pores easily the those crystal violet complex can pass out uh, outside the cell so what happens now after this stage for both of them because in the left hand side what we know that they are having a very thick peptidoglycan as a rigid wall so in this case uh, alcohol does not have any effect because there is no other destabilizing content present there because it's not having any outer membrane so everything is fine because alcohol cannot destabilize cell wall or peptidoglycan so peptidoglycan remains as it is right and then what we know that uh, peptidoglycan remains as it is and we know that those crystal values and is iodine complex are pretty large to pass through cell wall so they remains as it is so after this stage what we get in the left hand side we get they are retaining that purple color but in the right hand side as everything is washes out so it, it is now colorless so after this stage the final stain will be added which is the saffronin then we add saffronin flood it for one to two minutes and then wash it with water so once we are washing it with water we know that this gram uh, this, this, this left hand side image which is having only peptidoglycan layer which is very thick it will not allow saffronin to easily enter into inside the cytoplasm because it is already being uh, taken a color which is purple right so this is purple now so it won't allow that saffronin color to take entry but on the other hand in the left in the right hand side the, those cases which just decolorized due to the uh, addition of alcohol now will get the color of saffronin because it's also having holes in uh, in those peptidoglycan thin layer so it will uptake that uh, color uh, uptake that stain saffronin and it will be colored that pink so at the end we get two different type of colored bacteria one is this pink color as you can see in this picture and this purple color which we see in this grape like structure right now looking at this we can tell that those bacteria which are having the extra layer onto the outside as outer membrane which loses the color due to the addition of alcohol and get the color of saffronin and ultimately give us the pink color bacteria are termed as gram negative type of, type of bacteria on the other hand those type of bacteria which are not having any outer membrane having a very thick peptidoglycan wall and retain the color of uh, crystal violet throughout the time irrespective of the treatment of decolorizing agent that remains that purple color and we call it gram positive bacteria now as this process is developed by uh, the scientist according to his name it's termed as gram stain so it's not gram kilogram hectogram decagram all those things it's 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 the name of a scientist so always put capital g in this gram spelling okay so that's the principle of gram staining and that's how it's done guys thank you